On this week's episode, I go dumpster diving. Stop. Garbage bags full of lettuce, over $100 worth of vegan soup, dozens and dozens of edible bagels. That's what I found when I went dumpster diving and collected and documented my own dumpster haul. Why? Well, let me back up. I am obsessed with following dumpster diving accounts on Instagram and TikTok. And I'm constantly shocked and outraged by the stuff they find that retailers throw out every day. Like 800 eggs, 157 packets of bacon, a baby Brisa that retails at $200, Halloween costumes, and most shocking, thrift stores that throw out donated goods. Not only are these dumpster divers finding usable goods, they're posting on social media to bring attention to waste and create change within our retail system. That's why this week's episode is all about dumpster diving activism and how individuals are using social media to bring about change. So I wanna know, can dumpster divers make the world less wasteful? To find out, I'll connect with an urban harvester who uses dumpster diving to take on food waste. I came to this problem from an environmental angle. And actually it's this human social angle which is far more important in many ways and is what will solve this problem, I hope. Then I'll talk to Dumpster Godiva, who resells or donates her dumpster finds. When I find things like this, or things like this, uh, I take everything to, just like the caption says on there, uh, this place called Sweet Celebrations. And finally, I'll go dumpster diving with New York City's very own The Trash Walker. Oh my gosh. This is really shocking to me. And this is every single bagel store in New York City. I'm Lucy Biggers, and this is One Small Step. On this show, we've spent so much time talking about how individuals can lower their waste, and I still think that's really important. But type in hashtag dumpster diving on Instagram or TikTok, and you'll see the other side of this issue. Grocery stores and retailers are throwing out large amounts of usable goods and edible food. At a time of historic income inequality, food insecurity, and a global pandemic, this practice is completely unjust and unethical. Hi folks, I don't normally do all these videos at the supermarket because it's risky, but this is just crazy. This is absolutely crazy. We've got about 700 eggs. Look, it just goes down and down and down and down, all the way to the bottom. Eggs are absolutely perfect. Matt Homewood started his account in Urban Harvester to raise awareness to the unimaginable amounts of edible food getting tossed by supermarkets in Denmark. All the photos are me, myself, with my bicycle in my spare time. So I'm not trying to boast. What I'm trying to say is that this is the tip of the iceberg. I found, you know, in a small supermarket in Copenhagen, 157 packets of bacon. That's 35 pounds worth of bacon, five pigs worth of bacon. I often find, you know, whole chickens. I've come back with eight full chickens. My girlfriend, who's vegetarian, wants to kill me half the time. But every single fruit and vegetable you can think of is in the dumpster. So, you know, the leeks, the limes, the lemons, the oranges, the red peppers, the potatoes by the bucket, though. Then you've got all the miscellaneous items. So the toiletries, uh, your toothpaste, your toothbrush. I've found crockery, you know, new mugs and plates from China. You have got baby clothes. You've got boxer shorts, glasses. Candles. Uh, I've got my list here, you know, it's just, it goes on and on. So how big is this retail food waste problem in the U.S.? Well, according to Food Waste Resource, Refed, retailers generate around 10 million tons of surplus food per year. Of that, only 20% is donated, 30% goes to landfill, and the rest is used in animal feed, industrial facilities, anaerobic digestion, incineration, or land applications. One of the reasons edible food gets tossed is when the product doesn't sell before the use-by date. But in the U.S., except for infant formula, use-by dates have nothing to do with food safety. Instead, it's all about peak freshness, which means that retailers are throwing out safe and edible food just because of an arbitrary date. Retailers are also protected when they donate excess food. The Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Act of 1996 encourages businesses to donate excess food by protecting them from being sued if anything were to go wrong. Despite this law, good food is still going to landfill at a time when the pressures of the pandemic have meant that one in four households experienced food insecurity at some point during 2020. What do we do? How do we solve this? Because it just seems like such a big problem. What I think we need, we need a carrot and stick model. We need a carrot 
where basically governments across the West really incentivize supermarkets to have no food waste, no food surplus, sell the food. That's what you're in business to do. And so then we need to stick. And that's where we know from climate change, food waste is a catastrophe. Yeah, put a massive food waste tax, where basically you're going to shift the cost benefit analysis for supermarkets, where it's no longer worthwhile to dump out tons and tons of food every year. Crazy, isn't it? And some plant-based milk too. Okay, really quickly, this is everything that I got today. So I do make money off of it, and people don't seem to mind uh, where it came from as long as you are open about it. Aja Sanders is a U.S. postal worker and also a part-time reseller. When she dumpster dives, she'll either resell items online or donate them. But a lot of what she finds is slashed by retailers. Two days ago, I found two leather bags that they had cut up but um, had they not been cut up, the retail for those, one of them is $300, which is very nice. And then I don't know what the retail for the other one is, but it's probably around $175, $200. The practice of destroying unsold products has been written about before. Companies have a thing about uh, protecting their brand, protecting the image of their brand. And so there are companies that cut things up all the time because they don't want, you know, poor people uh, who dig in the trash to be wearing their items and have their name displayed on them. Destroying unsold products is often referred to as damaging out. And it's such a common practice that France recently banned companies from destroying clothes, cosmetics, and unsold goods. So you say to yourself, well, why do they need to cut these pants up when there are people out here who need pants? There are kids out here who are begging for school clothes. I wish they would have done, made a better decision about what to do with these items versus putting them in the dumpster because now I have the opportunity to go and save this myself, whereas you could have eliminated me, the middleman, really, essentially, and just done this yourself. After talking to Aja and Matt, I had to try dumpster diving for myself. So I met up with Anna Sachs, aka The Trash Walker, outside a juice store in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. It is 8.45. A lot of stores have started to close. Like retailers have started to close, so we're gonna start going through the trash. Anna's our guide. I'm not ready to do it without her. I'm excited. For oh, there she is. Hi. How are you? Okay. Bring this over here. And I know we're calling this dumpster driving, but there aren't really dumpsters in New York. It's all in that. I know. Street, That's right? why I call it going on a trash walk, because you're walking around the city, going through the trash. Right. Anna uses her Instagram and TikTok to encourage retailers to donate instead of dumping. She's taken on big businesses like CVS over the usable items found in their trash and started a viral campaign called Retail Made Me that highlighted how companies make employees destroy usable goods. So this is Super Greens, used by 5-5. Today is 5-4. Yeah, a day early. And so is this legal to be going through trash like this? It's kind of a gray area, but yes, generally it's an accepted thing that the Supreme Court said, like, that it's well known that waste on the curb is accessible for people to go through. So we have $15 retail price, expires tomorrow, really great super green vegan soups, retailing total $105. $105. Are you guys just dumpster diving? Yeah. So is this good? Are you a dumpster diver as well? Yeah. So you were like, can I have some of these? <laughs> Do you want it? Yeah. Okay, take it. <laughs> Thank you. We've been dumpster diving for five minutes, found $105 worth of like really nice vegan soup and already gave some away to a nice stranger who wanted some. So already winning, hit up one spot. So where, where are we going next? So that was probably return. Lemon face scrub. Cosmetics that are returned are tossed. According to one estimate, returned inventory creates 5.8 billion pounds of landfill waste each year. So why are things getting thrown out in your experience? Um, a lot of it is inventory related to past holidays. So if you think about Mother's Day is coming up, they'll have the stuff for Mother's Day on sale for maybe a week, and then they need to make room for Father's Day. And so it becomes the out with the old, in with the new. Next up, Anna took me to a bagel shop. Oh wait, they're still packaged. So we just overproduce breads in this country. And then this one, 
Stop. Stop. Are you kidding me? This is every single bagel store in New York City, like this. Then a grocery store where I found huge bags filled with lettuce. Just lettuce on lettuce on lettuce. I feel bad when I let a little container of lettuce go bad, you know, and then you know a grocery store is doing this type of thing. We finished up at a thrift store where Anna regularly finds tossed items, but the trash had already been taken. What? Oh, there I took the trash? We already took the trash. It was all piled up here. Oh, We missed the thrift shop trash. We got here too late for it. But I did find one puzzle. And Anna's now heartbroken because she thinks it was just probably piled full of usable items like this. But I got a really sick puzzle, so that's all that matters. This is actually pretty cool. Don't feel too bad. All right, we've, we've reached the end of our night of dumpster diving. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most we've ever gotten in a night, and 1 being nothing. Where are we? Low? This is a low this haul. This is very low. This is, <laughs> this is relatively little. And there's also all the waste. We're looking at the waste that's downstream of the supply chain, and there's waste along every single part of the supply chain, too. Warehouses and distribution centers, that, you, that waste is not really accessible, but it could be pallets filled with usable items that they choose to destroy. So I would say low and also just to keep in mind that there's like a lot of waste that's invisible to right. us. Anna recently left her job to pursue waste advocacy full time. She hopes to pass a federal bipartisan bill that can address retail waste by closing some existing corporate loopholes that she says leads to more waste. What I'm hoping it'll be like a really bipartisan, common sense, legislation everyone can agree on and bringing you know nonprofits to the table and corporations and retailers to the table and government officials and those in need and everyone coming together to think about how can we create better solutions to our wastefulness as a society i really hope this video opened your eyes to how much retailers are throwing away and that we need to be doing something differently as a society as a country when people are going hungry there's no reason why perfectly good items like this should be tossed every single night. It is just inhumane and it needs to end. So what's one small step you can take? Well, follow Dumpster Divers and Urban Harvester, Dumpster Godiva, and The Trash Walker. Learn about retail waste. Grassroots support can help pass new legislation that will incentivize businesses to donate over dumping and create some practical legal solutions to this waste problem. Gonna make a sandwich with my dumpster bread. Toasting this baby up. All right, dumpster sandwich. It's good.